All right, today we're going to be installing a Bond Performance Mark 7 Pro Mount Intercooler Kit. It's my 2015 Non Performance Pack PTI. It will fit the Performance Pack the same. Uh, those of you with dynamic uh, cruise control, we haven't tested fitting yet, so look for updates on that. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So, first, we're going to move. You don't necessarily have to undo the wiring, but it doesn't hurt just to be safe that you don't pull any pins and end up with a single tone instead of a dual tone horn when you're all said and done. Now, I've had questions about the sound of the horn after since they're facing a different direction, but those deflectors that we just removed is what they would have been bouncing off otherwise, so I, I personally can't tell much if any difference in horn sound. So I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Now this tab is one of the things, one of the very few things we'll be permanently altering on the car. Now, mine I just broke it off. Removing the sensor, just like all the other clips. It's very carefully working your way around. It is plastic mounted in plastic, so there's some give to it. We're going to save this for later. Might as well just plug it back in to the harness and put this in your spare parts pile. Alright. So the next thing the way is the secondary air pump, which other kids have you relocating. But we found that using all factory 
mounting locations and hardware. Wiring can just be relocated in this tab, either cut off and removed or bent out of the way, whichever you prefer. Alright, so we're going to remove this grommet, bell clamp, whatever you want to call it. We're going to reuse it in an existing factory hole. Right here. So there, <clears throat> just like it was meant to be, this way from the factory, that's out of the way. So this is where your decision comes to either bend or cut this piece of your SAI pump bracket. It's not taking any structure or rigidity away from where the pump's held. To just a tech glancing at your car if you're worried about warranty. It's going to look factory with it missing. All it was holding was that wiring, so we'll cut and uh, grab the saw, or if you want to bend it, it's up to you. I'm going to take this out of the way just to make sure we don't accidentally get it. All right, I just find a spot that's anywhere from the horn end board and zip tie or attach your outside air temperature. So it'll still be in the airflow and it'll be out of the way for our install. So now we've removed everything that we need clearance wise and we're ready to take the factory charge pipes off your factory inner horn. The kit doesn't include any kind of cap for your factory intercooler. So if you do 
want to possibly get back to stock, I would suggest at least taping up the ends, if not getting some caps like a factory replacement turbocharger would come with to keep the brie out of it. Screwdriver. You can definitely tell we had the other side off when we did the clutch. Box the intercooler, check it out, make sure there's no damage, pick whichever side you think is prettiest, and we're going to put their supplied, they call them easy mount brackets. I've noticed on previous kits that they made them just a little bit too wide, so when you install, we've supplied extra washers to take up that extra thickness so you're not going to induce cracks by overstressing the metals. So a flat washer in between the mount and the intercooler. And walk out on the back. These are metric, so have metric Allen's on hand. These don't need to be 100% tight yet, just to make sure that they are be flat during the actual install. So again, we're going to put a flat washer on the inside of the bracket. Oh, so I put it on the right way. But that is way too much. You already had some. Yes. Flip the intercooler upside down and install spacers on the bottom that are provided in the kit. Washer under the head of the bolt. You'll either have lock washers and a plain nut or nylon lock washers, depending on what we had when your kit ships. These will give you proper clearance off the core support.
All right. Now comes the important part, measuring and making sure everything is where you want it before you start drilling holes in the car. All right, so we measured our center line and marked it. The face of the intercooler is also marked, 15 inches on center. Uh, your rebar is 45 inches if you measure around the front. Then you need to transfer a line uh, nine and a half inches from the outside, measuring in on each side, and then set back from the edge of a rebar will be three quarters of an inch. So nine and a half inches from here to here, and then three quarters of an inch back is where you're going to want to drill your hole. Now I've already marked dimple with hammer and punch. I'm going to go ahead and start drilling. Make sure you wear safety glasses, glasses, face shield, some kind of protection because hardened steel and cobalt chips are not good for your eyes. Also, make sure you're on low speed and use very firm pressure and even slower than what the slow gearing has its drill going because if you go too fast you will make the steel even harder and you will have a very hard time drilling it. Too bad. No movie magic there. That really only takes a couple seconds per hole. Even with a little bit of technical difficulties. I guess I could be using my heavier corded drill, but this should work for what we're doing here. Careful it doesn't grab and hurt you when you break through. Alright, now we've got center line on the car, worked up with our temporary center line on the intercooler, got our holes drilled, and you could measure these on the brackets, but just to be safe, we're going to check all our clearances. Clearance for the AC condenser or spacers are providing that down at the bottom. Right here to give proper distance off core sport. So then we're going to mark the brackets of the intercooler from up top just in case laying on our back we didn't do the best job. Like I said before, 
we drilled these holes oversized. So there's gonna be a little bit of wiggle room until you get everything where it needs to be. Back to the smaller drill bit. All right, and if you don't have a dial indicator, by all means, you can do the guess and check method. But we need to make up just about 20 thousandths of an inch with washers to make both sides clear equally. Looks like it's going to take four washers. That'll give us the same distance from the bottom of the bumper to the top of the oh, wrong side. From the bottom of the bumper to the top of the inner core on both sides.
to the charge pipes and couplers. Jason went with the optional red couplers, also available in blue. It's a $10 option if you want something other than black. It'll only be the front couplers because Volkswagen likes to use oddball size stuff. So we have some very expensive HPS reducer couplers to go from the factory pipe in to the Bond Performance 2.5 inch 304L stainless steel charge pipes. So on every shipment we'll have six clamps for two and a half inch and two to go to the factory 60 millimeter thanks Volkswagen. So they're separated or ready to make it easy for you. Let's go ahead with the install. We're using real proper nylon oxide T-bolt plants. There's no need for hairspray or any other old school hot rodder method of making sure your couplers don't pop off. They're not going anywhere with these. No worries there. Moving under the car. Smaller end to the factory piping. Now something you want to note on these particular couplers, you're going to a plastic charge pipe unless you've upgraded to some sort of aftermarket aluminum turbo outlet and throttle body pipe. So don't go crazy with the torque on these. You want to be choked up on the ratchet and just go until it stops. Don't be hanging out off the end of your half inch breaker bar putting a thousand foot pounds of torque on these things because you will break your factory charge pipes. Also, make sure that you don't get a false tight on these lips. If you've got your clamp set too far back, you're going to get tight on there and not actually tighten anything as far as the coupler is concerned. Which you will be pulling your belly pan back off to reattach your charge pipe if you do that. We'll pop the other side on. clamps. As you can see we got clearance everywhere there needs to be clearance. Everything goes together like it should. And that's pretty much it. The bumper is going to go back on the same way it came off. Just short of a few little pieces we removed from it. The styrofoam piece that goes inside here, you want to press it in and make a dimple with the heads of each bolt and then remove it and trim that piece of styrofoam to give you clearance. That way all of your safety equipment is still in place and for the most part untampered with. And then button it up and enjoy it.